Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And thank you for joining us today. Let's say your car has got some serious miles on it already. And the fact is you've had it to the repair shop several times the last couple of months. And the bills are starting to stack up. Well, you get in your car tomorrow morning and start driving to work, same as always, and guess what? The check engine light comes on again. So what do you do? Do you fix your car one more time? Or do you bite the bullet and go get a new one? This is a crisis situation. Another school year has started. And with all that's going on with the virus these days, there are dozens and dozens of precautions being taken and dozens and dozens of changes being made and all kinds of uncertainty everywhere. So let's say you're a parent. Let's say you're the parent of a first grade child. What exactly are you supposed to do anyway? This is not easy. This is a crisis situation. One more example, maybe not quite so serious. But when I get dressed to come to church in the morning, I always like to put on a tie. But if my wife isn't around, I don't always know which tie actually matches my trousers. Smile if you want to. Go ahead and laugh, it's okay. But I'm standing there with these three ties in my hand and not knowing what to do. And for me anyway, this is a crisis situation. There are all kinds of crisis situations in life, I suppose. Some silly, some serious, some immediate, some still out there in the future a ways. But if you think about it, crisis situations all have one point in common. They all demand a decision. A crisis demands a decision. That's kind of what makes it a crisis in the first place. There are two divergent paths and you can only pick one. You've got to choose. Well, the Greek root of our English word crisis is krino. And don't worry about it now, you can Google it later. But the Greek root of our word crisis is krino. And krino simply means choose, okay? And hopefully you can see the connection here. Krino and crisis, they both mean bottom line, you have a choice to make. All right. But interestingly enough, krino is also the word in Greek that means judge. Same Greek word, but two somewhat different English translations. And there's probably a whole month of sermons waiting to be preached on the subject of krino, meaning judge. The New Testament, as you probably know, has some pointed warnings against judging others. Jesus, for example, famously says in Matthew chapter 7, Judge not, lest ye be judged. Why do you notice the speck in your brother's eye, but not see the log in your own? Why, in other words, do you judge someone for something when you're guilty of doing the exact same thing yourself? The Bible is not real fond of hypocrisy, it's safe to say. Or Romans 14. Believe it or not, believe it or not, it seems that in the early church, people were having an argument about eating vegetables. Some folks did, some folks didn't. Why is this even an issue, St. Paul wants to know? Why are you guys arguing over such petty things? This is not a major moral problem. This is broccoli, for heaven's sake. Why are you judging each other over what you do or don't eat for dinner? The Bible would really prefer us to be a bit more patient with each other and a bit more tolerant of one another in the small matters of everyday life. You think? The Bible, in short, would very much like it if you took krino, meaning judging, and just left it in the hands of God.
but krino meaning choosing? Krino meaning facing the crisis moments of your life and coming to a decision? My sense from scripture is that's still on us to do. And my sense from scripture is it's past time. Children are hungry in this world, after all. Families are in desperate need. Certainly, we could point to places around the globe where this is true. But you really don't have to look that far away, do you? It's in your own community, too. It's in your school. And it's a crisis. And we can choose to do something about it. Or not. But it's time to crino. It's time to choose. Speaking of school, students are heading back to class as are teachers and staff members. For the teachers and staff this year, it's kind of like building the airplane in mid-flight, isn't it? And that can be scary. Well, many of us no longer have kids in school. Many of us aren't that closely tied to the school building anymore. We could just read the newspaper every morning and sadly shake our heads. Wow, that's too bad, you know. We could do that. Or we could try to find a way to help. Either way, it is a crisis and it's time to crino. It's time to choose. And faith. Actively following this crucified Jesus Christ in word and in deed, week in and week out, no excuses, no delays, no pretending you really didn't hear him. Following this Jesus Christ in your life personally, not the most popular thing to do these days, not the easiest. And I admit it certainly is something I'm tempted to sternly preach about pointing fingers here and shaking my head there, tisk, tisk, tisk. To be honest, crino, meaning judging, is always easy to do in a sermon. But it's not helpful. Crino, meaning judging, never is. But crino, meaning choosing. You and me, both of us as individuals, choosing taking time right now to look at our habits and examine our priorities, resolving to get ourselves and our families into weekly worship and Bible study, and with the help of God leaving behind the sinful habits that have cost us so much personally, seeking to cling to the cross of Christ instead. For you and for me, it's time to crino. It's time to choose. And for us as Lutheran Christians, whenever we talk about choosing, we begin and end by talking about the choice that Jesus Christ has already made. Jesus Christ is and remains the one and only Son of the one and only God, who for us and our salvation came into this world to feed the hungry, heal the sick, welcome the outcast, and share the love of God with every person he ever met every single day. And then he died on a cross. He died to forgive us and then rose again to save us, not because we deserve it, not because we love him so very much, but rather because he loves us. He loves the world. Remember the words of Jesus in John chapter 15, you did not choose me. Fess up. You did not choose me, Jesus said, and you know it. I chose you. Jesus did not crino judge you. Jesus crino chose you. Repeat. Jesus did not crino judge you. Jesus crino chose you. And he made you his own. And with his choice, his love as our foundation, with his choice, his love as our destiny forever in heaven, we have this day today to crino, not judge, not sadly shake our heads, not point fingers at someone else and blame them for the very things we do ourselves. No. We have today to crino 
choose. We have today to love the one who first loved us and to love this world he died to save. With the help of God, may you choose to do so. With the help of God, may this be the day. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.